Hi, I'm Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Crates Pima Pineapple Cactus Go Out and Sketch instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch a cactus similar to the Pima Pineapple Cactus, applying the techniques learned in the step-by-step -step lesson. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. Head out to a garden, park, your backyard, or kitchen table. Today, I'm sketching a cactus similar in shape to the Pima Pineapple Cactus. Unfortunately, it does not have a flower, but it has a similar shape and color. So you'll definitely be able to apply what you learned from the step-by-step -step lesson. Let's get started. First, lightly sketch the shape of the cactus on your page. So you want to kind of think about where you want to place it and how big you want it to be. Think of just the basic shape of that cactus. So I'm just going to start drawing really lightly. I'm not going to draw the pot. And if you need to change the shape a little bit, in order to get it to fit, that's fine. Just keep those marks really light. And then work up to some slightly darker marks once you get an idea of the shape and size. It's a really rough basic shape. I'm going to just very roughly add in the outside shape and the ridges. And this might look a little bit different to you than the way it looks from my angle, but I feel you still get a really good idea of how to do this on your own. So I'm just drawing that outer shape, which has some bumps. I'm not paying attention to the spines quite yet. And I'll add those in next. So that looks about right. I'm going to add a few of the lines in and then add the spine. So add some of these lines. So I believe it's the same as the other cactus of the tubercles. Not as pronounced as the Pima pineapple cactus, but still has these bumps, central aerials with the spines, similar color with coming out one central and several on the outer areas kind of spiking out. There, These ones are a little bit more curved on all of the spines, whereas from what I could tell with the Pima Pineapple Cactus, they were all straight. Maybe I was wrong, maybe they're actually curved like this one. And it's good to kind of find a central point and think of all of this as shapes as much as possible. And still ignoring the spines and drawing in really lightly. And then once I get a few marks in, I'll start working with those to get the rest of the marks in, kind of joining this all together. So using this as kind of a landmark here, see there's a little line, and then a bump here, and then it goes in, kind of like that. So I'm using that as a landmark. helps me figure out where to add the next lines. And it doesn't need to be exact. This is a little bit too big, a little bit too small. That's totally fine. It's still gonna look like a cactus. I feel like this part of the cactus is complicated enough for this applied sketching assignment. I think it might have been a little too much with the flower. So 
So as you can see, I've sketched in all of those just with a really light rough sketch lines just to give me an idea. And then I'm going to work from these to uh, write, draw in all the rest here. I'm going to work from what I already have and just kind of get an idea where those lines are and then work from there. And that's probably too big or too small. It's totally fine. If it bothers me a lot, I can change it, but I recommend not erasing too much. As you can see, a lot of sketchy lines, I'm going to leave those. I'm not going to erase them unless they're too dark or too obvious. This one is, it, you can see it's kind of curved, so that will help to put a little line there to help me see where the other side would end up being. basic shape of the cactus mapped out. So it's all on the page in very light, rough, sketchy lines. And now I'm going to add some of those spines. So let's start with the circle of the aerial and then go ahead and draw just single lines for the spines. So it doesn't have to be exact at all, and you can go really fast with this if you really want to. You don't have to have the exact amount. Once you have the spines drawn in as lines, you can add another line coming down towards the aerial to finish those spines keeping it really thin. I recommend starting from the tip and working down towards the aerial. So I'm just going to go through and add all of the aerials and all of the spines like I did right here throughout the whole cactus. I realized I placed those spines in completely the wrong spot, so I erased it. And that's totally fine if you make a mistake like that to erase it.
I added a few lines in for the dirt. And then, I don't know what kind of cactus this is, so I'll just put cactus. Now that I have all the lines I want, I'm going to go ahead and move on to adding some paint. I these colors left over from my step-by-step -step Pima Pineapple Cactus painting. I just add a little bit of water to them so that I can reuse them rather than remixing. So make sure you start with a clean brush and start with painting in the first layer of these spines. I'm just going to get a very light, wet Pima Brown. So I'm adding a little bit of water, dabbing it on my towel and testing on my test paper. Looks pretty good. So the base of these spines is white, but it's also a little bit of a tannish color. So I'm going to go through and just roughly add that to all the spines. I'm not going to be too worried about getting uh, outside the lines, brushing over each one. And again, I'm starting left to right so that I don't smudge the paint. And this should dry really quickly. Next, I'm going to clean up my brush, pick up a little bit of the Pima Green, and add that to the cactus flush on my picture. And I'm going to start with a really wet, lower concentration color so that it looks light on my paper. It still might be a bit dark, it's a lot of pigment in this. Adding a lot of water, dabbing it off onto my towel and then testing it on my test paper. I think that looks pretty good. It looks like the lightest areas I can see on my cactus. So this is pretty dry and you can test that by just kind of dabbing your finger. Better not to run your finger across it. It might cause a lot of streaks in your painting unless that might be what you're looking for. I'm going to avoid the areas because those are going to stay white. And I'm just going to take that paint and paint in these sections. I'm not thinking too much about the overall color, just kind of looking at each little section between the spines and these lines I've drawn, and kind of just filling that in. And as I run low on the paint, as it gets lighter on my paper, I'll go ahead and pick a little bit more up, dab it on my towel, and then start reapplying again, working in those sections, avoiding the aerials. Once you add all the green paint, let that dry before adding any other colors. Next, I'm going to add some color to the spines. On this cactus, the color is at the tip of the spines, and also in a lot of the spines that are at the top here. So I'm going to add that. Kind of this reddish color. going to mix it with a little bit of the brownish color, it's a little browner. So I picked up a little bit of each, kind of mix it to the side here. I picked up some on my paintbrush, pick up a little bit more. And this is why it's good to have your color wheel with you. You may have to do a little bit of color mixing depending on what you're painting. It needs a little bit more of the red. So I'm going to pick up a little more and test it again. I like that a lot. It looks a lot like that color to me. So I'm dabbing off my paintbrush, getting it clean so that I can control the paint a little bit better. Picking up a little bit. And I'm going to start here at the top because I want these spines to dry. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the color to the tips. 
and all it should be dry in it by the time I'm done putting it in so that I can start painting in the darker green. Carefully, you don't have too much water on your brush when you're adding to the tips. You can control that by putting the paint on your towel before applying it. To make this lighter, I'll just add a little bit of water in my palette. Make sure I control the water that I ends up on my paper on my towel and then add it to the spines. Next to clean off your brush and you can pick up a darker green color. Adding a little bit of water on my palette. Testing it on my test paper. Looks great. I'm adding a little bit more water because it feels like I don't have enough control. That feels better. It runs a little smoother. So the pigment. It's just a little too thick in there. Starting at the crevices, that's the darker area. I'm gonna put a little bit of paint in there. Let's go ahead and define those. Now that this is dry, I'm going to go ahead and add another layer of that green color. I'm going to use the same technique I used in the step-by-step -step to create a little bit of a gradient. Dab it off on my towel and then go ahead and start applying it. And I'm going to work from in little section to section and I'm going to add it to the darker area. Dab it off on my towel. I'm going to take that clean wet brush and kind of work that paint into the lighter areas. If I need a little bit more, I can pick some more up and dab it into that area. It'll kind of just spread around and you can move it with your paintbrush if you want. It's a few things to try. So I'm just going to take this section by section and add that color. Looks like it's darker in the creases between each of these, what I think are tubercles. And dabbing off my brush and then applying it to the edges. Get a little bit of a gradient. I'm not gonna get really carried away with getting it super dark in between. rely on my ink pens for that. Just kind of getting a little bit of variation in the color. It's a little bit of dark and a little bit of light. You can also apply the paint and then as you continue to paint, your brush will run out of paint pigment and it'll get lighter. So there are a few different techniques you can try to do this. And no matter how it ends up, it's going to be great. I didn't think there was an, it was dark enough there, so I went ahead and added a little bit more. And it kind of led into the lighter area of it, which is nice.
So you can, of course, work on this longer and build up the colors, but I'm going to leave it where it's at and move on to adding some ink lines. I'm going to use the 005 Black Micron to add the same lines I drew in the beginning. So you can just go throughout and do that to your image as well. And this is dry. I did make sure it dried. I'm dabbing it to see if it's dry enough. You can also redefine the lines a bit at this time. Now I'm going to thicken some of the lines up with the 01 Black Micron. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the 08 Black Micron. And I'm going to write in the common name here, just the name, so we don't have the cactus name. Maybe I'll move back to the other micron when I'm done adding these lines in. The spines are also very heavy. The only light spot is really the aerials around here that seems kind of delicate where I would use the other micron. I can add lines in to kind of give some variation to some of these spines and deepen some of these grooved areas just to give it more contrast rather than taking a long time adding in layers of paint which would do the same thing but sometimes when you're working on a field sketch you don't have a lot of time because the environmental reasons or other reasons that limit your amount of time that you have. So it's good to get it done quick. So I'm not really being super exact about these spines, just kind of getting them in and pretty messy with it. Because again, this is just a sketch. And I do get more delicate as you go down the cactus, so I'm not going to add as many dark lines on the bottom to kind of show that delicacy. I think I like where this is at. You can, of course, continue to work on this, drying and painting, letting it dry between layers of ink and paint. These Micron pens are waterproof, so once it dries, you're good to go. I think I'm gonna add one more little line here that I missed. There, 
that's better. This is your sketchbook, so make it yours. You can add any observations around here in the white space. You can talk about the cactus, or you can talk about your mood that day, or how the weather was, or anything else that you'd like to add. We're done. Great job observing your world and keep practicing. Thank you for joining me. Make sure to check out naturesketchcrate.com for future crates and like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel.